High above the forests of the Pacific Northwest, snow-capped giants stand in silence. To the casual eye, the Cascade volcanoes seem frozen in time, their glacial crowns and jagged ridges standing as monuments to nature's permanence. But beneath those serene peaks lies a restless engine, an arc of fire born from the grinding of tectonic plates that has shaped both landscapes and lives for millennia. What happens when these slumbering giants stir again? In the summer of 2025, Mount Rainier offered a chilling glimpse of that possibility. Over a thousand earthquakes rattled its summit in just a few weeks, the largest swarm ever recorded there. Scientists reassured the public that magma was not yet on the move, but for many, the tremors were a reminder that the Cascades are not dormant relics. They are active volcanoes with the potential to unleash devastation. History has shown us the stakes. Entire valleys buried by lahars, cities blanketed in ash, and lives transformed in moments. But what do these recent earthquake swarms really mean? Could they signal an impending disaster on the horizon? Let's find out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Cascade volcanoes owe their existence to a powerful tectonic drama unfolding beneath the Pacific Northwest. Along the western margin of North America, the Juan de Fuca Plate is steadily sliding beneath the North American Plate in a process known as subduction. As the plate descends, it heats and releases water and other volatiles, lowering the melting point of the overlying mantle. This process generates magma that rises through the crust, sometimes stalling to evolve underground and sometimes erupting at the surface to build the volcanic arc. Stretching more than 700 miles, the Cascade Volcanic Arc includes some of North America's most iconic peaks, Mount Shasta and Lassen Peak in California, Mount Hood and the Three Sisters in Oregon, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and Mount Baker in Washington, and Mount Garibaldi in British Columbia. The range is dominated by stratovolcanoes, steep, conical mountains built from alternating layers of lava, ash, and pyroclastic debris. Unlike the broad shield volcanoes of Hawaii, these peaks produce explosive eruptions fueled by thick, gas-rich magma. Geophysical imaging shows the subducting slab steepening inland, with local crustal blocks guiding magma accumulation. This has created a spectrum of hazards, ash columns, pyroclastic flows, lava domes, and, in this glaciated landscape, lahars, fast-moving volcanic mudflows capable of devastating entire valleys. Together, these geological processes make the Cascades both a magnificent natural landscape and one of the most hazardous volcanic regions in the world. The history of the Cascade volcanoes is marked by explosive power and deceptive calm. The modern benchmark for catastrophe came on May 18, 1980, when Mount St. Helens erupted after two months of swelling and seismic unrest. A magnitude 5-plus earthquake triggered the largest landslide in recorded history, uncorking a lateral blast that leveled nearly 230 square miles of forest. Ash soared 80,000 feet into the sky, paralyzed air traffic, and drifted as far as Oklahoma. The eruption released energy equivalent to 24 megatons of TNT, around 1,600 times the Hiroshima bomb, killing 57 people and causing billions in damage. From 2004 to 2008, the volcano reawakened, extruding 92 million cubic meters of lava to rebuild its crater dome, a quieter but potent reminder of its volatility. Further south, Lassen Peak erupted from 1914 to 1921, climaxing in a May 1915 blast that scattered ash hundreds of kilometers downwind, the last cascade eruption before St. Helens. Mount Rainier, though quieter in recent centuries, has unleashed catastrophic lahars. The Osceola mudflow 5,600 years ago carried two to three cubic kilometers of debris over 120 kilometers, burying valleys now densely populated. About 500 years ago, the electron mudflow surged down the Puyallup Valley, underscoring Rainier's danger even without a major eruption. Older events include Mount Mazama's climactic eruption 7,700 years ago, which collapsed into today's crater lake, 
and Mount Hood's eruptions in the late 18th century, sending pyroclastic flows and lahars down its flanks. Mount Shasta in California, too, has erupted repeatedly over the past 4,000 years, adding to the arc's restless legacy. In July 2025, Mount Rainier reminded the Pacific Northwest that its silence is never guaranteed. On July 8th, a shallow swarm erupted beneath the summit, shaking out hundreds of tiny earthquakes each day at depths of 2 to 6 kilometers. At its peak, instruments captured more than 30 earthquakes an hour, and by month's end, over 1,000 earthquakes had been recorded, the most intense swarm ever measured at Rainier. For two uneasy weeks, the mountain dominated headlines, sparking fears of an awakening. Scientists explained that the shaking, while dramatic, was not a signal of imminent eruption. Most quakes were under magnitude 2, and no ground swelling or gas release was detected. The swarm pointed to hydrothermal fluids surging through cracks, a noisy adjustment in the volcano's plumbing rather than magma on the move. By late August, seismicity had subsided, yet Rainier was not alone. In May 2025, offshore at Axial Seamount on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, the volcano swelled and quaked with thousands of tremors per day, hinting at another eruption in its regular cycle. Though submarine eruptions pose little direct risk, Axial's unrest underscored a larger truth. From the depths of the seafloor to the icy crown of Rainier, the region's volcanic systems are restless. Together, they remind us that the Cascade Arc is not sleeping, it is stirring. Is a disaster truly impending? Scientifically, that would mean unmistakable precursors, persistent swarms with rising magnitudes, measurable ground deformation, increased volcanic gases, elevated heat, or visible surface changes. None of these accompanied Rainier's 2025 swarm, yet the Cascades remain primed for events that could erupt suddenly or unfold decades from now. The most feared is a lahar. Mount Rainier is the axis of that risk. A massive collapse or eruption-triggered lahar could accelerate to highway speeds, funnel into valleys, and reach Ording, Puyallup, Sumner, and even Tacoma in under an hour. The Osceola and Electron mudflows prove this danger is real, their deposits now buried beneath suburbs, highways, ports, and pipelines. With valley floors increasingly urbanized, even a moderate lahar could surpass a major earthquake in destructive reach. The impact chain would be devastating. Bridges torn away, interstate and rail links severed, substations and fuel depots submerged, and shipping channels clogged with debris. Cascading failures, loss of power and clean water, port shutdowns, fuel shortages, would ripple across the region. Hospitals and schools within hazard zones would have mere minutes to act, with survival hinging on sirens, rehearsed routes, and community discipline. Elsewhere in the arc, other threats persist. A St. Helens-style explosive eruption could spread ash across major cities, halting flights and stressing infrastructure. Mount Hood could see dome collapses sending pyroclastic flows and lahars into populated valleys. On longer timescales, another Mazama-scale caldera event could bury the Northwest in ash and alter global climate. Probability may be low, but consequences this severe ensure the Cascades are ranked among the world's most dangerous volcanic chains. The U.S. Geological Survey's Cascades Volcano Observatory and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network now operate a vast web of seismometers, GPS receivers, cameras, tilt meters, and gas sensors, upgraded with solar tough stations, expanded telemetry, and mobile units for rapid deployment. During Rainier's 2025 swarm, the Cascades Volcano Observatory even flew its first airborne gas survey since 1998 to search for hidden magmatic signals. Research continues to refine models, from INSAR satellites and AI-driven quake detection to the Ocean Observatory's initiative's cabled observatory at Axial Seamount, an offshore laboratory helping decode volcanic unrest across the region. Civil defense has also advanced. Pierce County runs a multi-layered lahar warning system combining flow monitors, sirens, mobile alerts, and regular school drills. In Ording, residents rehearse mass evacuations and are building a dedicated evacuation bridge to shave minutes off escape times.
monthly siren tests keep the system and the public tuned. None of this eliminates risk. All of it reduces time to action when every minute matters. The 2025 earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier was not the beginning of an eruption, but it was a powerful reminder that the Cascade volcanoes remain restless. These mountains breathe. Most swarms are nothing more than hydrothermal adjustments. Some are magmatic intrusions that stall. And one day, a swarm will mark the front edge of a true eruption or collapse. The advantage in the Cascades is that major events usually give hours to weeks of warning, offering precious time for scientists to detect change and for communities to act. The lesson is clear. Preparedness cannot wait for the crisis. More instruments, reliable telemetry, regular drills, hardened infrastructure, and land use planning that respects mapped hazard zones are the essential investments. The volcanic threat is distinct from the looming Cascadia megathrust earthquake, yet both demand steady vigilance. In the end, Rainier's 2025 swarm was a wake-up call without disaster, an invitation to stay ready. The calm skyline of the Cascades is no guarantee of safety. It is only a pause before the next chapter.